We start our show with some very sad news. Bill Walton, the two-time NBA champion and Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer, died today at the age of 71 following a prolonged battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his family, and NBA Commissioner Adam Silver released a statement reading in part, Bill Walton was truly one of a kind. As a Hall of Fame player, he redefined the center position. Bill then translated his infectious enthusiasm and love for the game to broadcasting, where he delivered insightful and colorful commentary, which entertained generations of basketball fans. But what I will remember most, Silver said, about him was his zest for life. What a beautiful way to put it. He was a regular presence at league events, always upbeat, smiling ear to ear, and looking to share his wisdom and worth, warmth. We will be remembering, honoring bill for the next hour and a half here on NBA Today with Adrian Wojnarowski, the Hall of Famer, Michael Wilbon, Kendrick Perkins, I'm Malika Andrews. It's rare to be talking about a Hall of Fame player and a legendary broadcaster. And I don't know where to start with Bill Walton, Michael Wilbon, because his greatness encapsulated so much. You just did. You started the only place. Greatness across multiple platforms, across decades. I don't know where to start. And, uh, you know, Bill was only five years older than I am now, but it felt like I was watching him as a tiny little kid. I wasn't, but his personality was so large and his impact on basketball and the industry and sports and then broadcasting so great. And so I watched all those games, the 88 games in a row and the, 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 the three times he was player of the year and multiple championships and hugging Coach John Wooden, when I seemed like I seemed like I was a little kid, and then I got to share a set like this with Bill on Countdown with Great Bill Walton, and I, I just uh, he would come in with reams before research was what it was. Bill would have his own research, and he would come in come in with like trees had died, so Bill could have all the copy. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that he would have, and but there was still pain. He had to lay on the floor at times during commercial breaks because he was in such pain, his back from his foot issues. I've had a number of foot surgeries recently and I asked Bill about that, but I'll just tell you quickly, I was fortunate enough, am fortunate enough to be inducted into the Hall of Fame three years ago, the Basketball Hall of Fame. And while I was doing a rehearsal, you have a rehearsal of your speech that morning and I'm in there with Tim Duncan. I'm terrified, Per. <laughs> terrifying. Mm -hmm. And Bill <clears throat> ducks his head into the room and in that voice just says, Take as much time as you want. You don't need, there's no bell, there's no Kornheiser, this isn't PTI. Make them drag you off the stage. And at that point, he relaxes you. Like Tim Duncan and I were both terrified, except that Bill put us at ease. And so, man, he and, he and Dave Pash, I feel for Dave Pash, particularly, yes, Bill's family, Dave Pash. Steve Snapper Jones, rest of his soul. I, I, to listen to the two of them, I got a satellite dish in part. For Bill Walton, because you could hear Clippers games even 30 years ago when nobody was watching the Clippers. <laughs> you wanted to hear Bill Walton. Yeah. At least I did. There's only two legendary players I've ever remembered bringing my son to dinner with. Charles Barkley and Bill Walton. And you think of those two. They're the only comparisons, I think, really for each other. Transcendent players, yeah. transcendent broadcasters in very different ways. And there's really only one Charles, but you know, Bill Walton, you just described it. Go back to the Clippers, to NBA coverage, to, you know, later in his career, the Pac-12 late at night. Uh, but I wanted him to hear the stories and be around those two. And the funny thing with Bill Walton is you've heard all the stories about Red Auerbach blowing the smoke when he's in there with the doctor trying to get his foot approved to play for the Celtics. Any number... You have no idea how many of them are actually true. <laughs> it but you matter. wanted them to be true, and it didn't matter. It, no one could tell stories like him, but what he was as a player was revolutionary. And as good as anybody who played the center position, you know, you look at Nikola Jokic now, his roots are in Bill Walton, how he played that position, the passing, uh, an MVP, a finals MVP, three-time National Player of the Year. You think of maybe the greatest college performance ever, 44 points in a national championship game in 1973 on 21 right. of 22 shooting. Uh, the foot injuries obviously derailed his career, but pound for pound, skill-wise, the idea that John Wooden had Lou Alcindor, obviously Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for three years, 
and then another three years of Bill Walton after. Uh, he comes from an era that we'll never see again, and his impact, not just as a player, but as a broadcaster, mm -hmm. one of a kind. Bill Walton was therapy, right? He was therapy in his own way, meaning if you were having a bad day, a yeah. sad day, he was the person that you wanted to be around. Absolutely. Because it was nothing negative about him, right? He would brighten up your day. And I remember when I was drafted to the Boston Celtics, I remember sitting down with him and he asked me, do you know what it means to, to be a Celtic? And I was like, no, I'm from Beaumont, Texas. I don't <laughs> have a clue. And he sat down, he talked to me literally for about an hour and a half on the history of the Boston Celtics and what it meant. And how you should approach it every single day with the pride. And, and what I got from it is he was real. It was real. It was authentic. It wasn't nothing fake about him. It was everything was authentic, and you just love it because you could be around somebody, right, and when they have that type of energy, it's contagious. Right, you saying, man, how's well? What you doing for the rest of your day? Cause I, I want to come, <laughs> come kick it with yeah, you. Where, yeah. you. where you going? What you doing on your free time? I want to come hang with you. And, and, and this perk, right, is somebody who experienced tremendous pain, yeah, tremendous suffering, uh, a speech impediment as a young person. Mm -hmm. That when he was a player, you wouldn't have imagined that he could become the kind of broadcaster he did. He overcame a lot in his life. And we were supposed to be talking about the Boston Celtics, but it turned out to be talking about like life. And That's we just listen. I just listen. Like, right. just Bill Walton talking about, you know, what you should be doing and how you should be taking care of yourself and what you should be thinking about. And you know how he would dive into things. We were things. fortunate, too, Perk, to have that person at that point. That was a second life. Right. And, and, and Roge mentioned it. Look, Bill was unbelievably shy and introverted, the stuttering being a large part of that. And so it was unthinkable that that, that person who people thought was too sheltered by John Wooden, that, that, that he would never flower, that he flowered in the way he did and became a complete extrovert. And the person, as Perk says, that you wanted to be around, that you wanted to uh, share experiences with, get advice from, talk about the history of the game. Because there's another thing. And, and Bill Walton did this to the, to the degree that at a time where Bill Walton comes along and becomes a young man during the back end of the civil rights movement and struggle. And he had shared a locker room at the beginning of his career, at the end of theirs, with people like Bill Russell and certainly Kareem, and, and, and shared the stage of life in Southern California, people like Jim Brown. And, and Bill went out on a limb. Bill was one of the, I'm going to say, few white athletic stars of his time that then took to the front lines of this struggle and did not mind talking about it, did not mind getting in somebody's face about it. And you're like, wow, mm -hmm. that's the same guy who was so, so inward and didn't seem like he would ever be this person. And so you got it publicly, you got it privately, and to underscore your word, it was, he was real. It was authentic. Mm -hmm. And Bill felt these things. And then once he was out, once he was out there as this yeah. character, you know, but it wasn't a character, he was real, he wanted to bring everybody along with him. And that is the part that you know, I think makes those of us who got to know him so sad today. He, 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 he was the one that would, like, tell you, hey, listen, if I pass away tomorrow, you better not cry at my funeral. <laughs> Otherwise, I had a security escort you out. But like, that's how... Yeah. That's seriously. You hear him saying it. Yeah. As much as he talked, as much as that was part of what made him larger than life, every room he walked into and conversation that he entered, he cared more about how you were doing than listening to himself, Will Bond. I think that was, too, from the pain that Will mentioned that, that he had suffered again. I, 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 the first time, the first, I remember the first day I worked with Bill, we're in Bristol. And I think it's a Sunday, maybe a Friday night, but a Friday or Sunday doubleheader. And we got hours in the studio, and Bill had to get out of the chair and find a place that he could relieve some of the physical pain he was enduring. Mm. And I don't remember anymore whether that was feet or back. It really didn't matter. It was what he, he did. And yet, when the light went on, you know, and he'd come back and he would talk about the people in the room and he didn't want anybody to talk about his pain. You knew he was in it, but he didn't revel in it. And that's a tough place. You look, you look I, I, I had my son, you know, he looks at the numbers and people look at numbers now, they want to judge careers and assess. And like, no, 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 you, you can't look at the numbers. You can go look at video. You can, you can go right. see how Bill Walton played. Yeah. You see one of those clips we just had where he shoots a left-hand hook? 
You think he didn't study Kareem, left and right hand, and he has a left hand hook shot off the baseline. And he, by the way, he's great, 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 great athlete. I mean, running, jumping. Look, there's a left hand hook off glass. How many people have that now? Listen, there's a really talented world, and you have your Jokic's out there, and you have your Embiid's. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't know that anybody out there had the complete package at this size that Bill Walton has. So he was in all that pain, and it reduced his career. But in the room, on the road, sitting in a room pregame, he talked about you. He wanted to know about you and your family and how your kids were and what your life was like. And it was – he was an amazing dude. That chapter of his career in Boston, uh, that 85-86 Celtic Ooh. team, uh, when he had just enough health left in him to play a six-man role on, maybe as good of a team, certainly one of the best two, three, four teams in NBA history, you know, with Bird, Mikhail, Parrish, and their prime, and what it meant for Bill Walton to be a part of that team, how seamlessly he fit into it. You know, that was certainly one of the great passing teams of all time, and, you know, he never really played a complete season after that, but I think being a part of that Celtic dynasty uh, was so important to him. And the way Larry Bird talks about him, Kevin McHale, th they knew they were playing with one of the all-time greats, yeah. you know, although the, that he was somewhat diminished at that point. He was a giant among giants. We are certainly thinking of mm -hmm. his wife, his children, his family today as we continue to remember Bill over the next hour and a half here on NBA Today. And we're going to head to break now, but I encourage all of you, social media can be such a terrible place. But if you take a look at it today, if you take a look at it right now, just scroll through a couple of stories of outpourings of love, of people remembering Bill and the impact that he left on the world. It's really special to see that kind of legacy being left. NBA Today, we'll be right back.